Hi, welcome back to Will Candles. My name is Sherry and I make videos all about candle making and the candle business. Today's video is going to be all about how to find the right wick for your candles. Before we get started, I want to thank and also congratulate Peter Young. He is my first member of my candle making membership group. Down below, there will be a link that will tell you what the perks are of becoming a member of the candle making group. And Peter, thank you from the bottom of my heart for your love and support. So um, we're going to move on with today's video. Okay, so finally the video a lot of you have been asking me for. I don't know what took me so long to make this. Well, I did know because I was burning candles. I was testing and testing and testing and trying to come up with some um, video that you could actually see the flames on the candles and getting this all put together. And then other things just cut. Mm. Okay, anyway, so we're here today. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to help you find the right wick size for your candles. Okay, as you already know, I have my handy dandy notes down here. So I'm just going to, okay, jump into it. Okay, so the first thing that you are going to want to do is, and I'm just using these, these are some of my test candles. So this is um, just an example. It can be any candle vessel that you have you are going to go onto the website or to the store or where have you that you have actually purchased this candle jar from. And you are going to want to find the diameter of this candle. Now, sometimes um, some glass candles are really super thick and that manufacturer may actually give an outside di diameter and then they may also give an inside diameter, you want the inside diameter to that candle. Now, sometimes you're going to have an odd shaped candle and it may get a little thinner up here and it may get super wide down here. You're going to want to find the widest diameter of that candle because that candle is going to have to burn all the way down evenly. That's what your customers are going to expect. So, once you have the diameter to your candle, you're going to go on, and this is one of the best places that I have personally found to start with, which is um, the website of Candle Science. I know that there are other wick guides out there. Um, this is just the one that I choose. I mean, they're not, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but it is just the one that I choose. So I am going to instruct you, which I will make sure that I put the link down below go to the candle science website and you are going to put into the search window you're going to put candle wick guide and once you get to the candle wick guide you're going to want to click on it so if it's on your phone it may have some kind of drop down i'll put some kind of image on the screen so that you can see what i'm talking about and it's going to ask you for let's see no it's going to ask you to choose your wax so I use coconut soy, um, and even though the coconut soy C6, and even though Candle Science does not sell that wax, they give me the information for that particular wax. And then it's going to say, choose your diameter. Now, when it comes to choosing your diameter, it's going to give you a window of a size. So it may be like 2.74 to, and I'm just making up random numbers, 2.74 to 2.94 and size medium. Okay, so let's say that your candle falls right at that latter part, which is very close to the 0 0.94, 0 0.93, 0 0.0 whatever. I always go up to the next size. You can choose that wick size to be one of the wicks that you're going to test or you can follow me <laughs> don't blame me if it doesn't turn out well but that is simply um explaining to you what i do is always go up to the next size that it's suggesting suggesting okay so the next thing that you're going to want to do is let's sigh 
Okay, so primarily candle science suggests that you try three wick size. So if the suggested wick size, let's just say in the CD wick series, is CD 12, I'm going to try CD 12, CD 14, and CD, yeah, 16. I think it goes up by twos for CDs. Um, so CD 16. So I am going to make three candles and they must have the same uh, variables. So it must have the same wax. It must have the same fragrance, the exact same fragrance. It must have the same fragrance amount and it must be in the same jar or vessel or container, whatever you want to call it. If any of those things changes, it's really not going to be a fair test and you're not going to get an accurate result. So for instance, I don't even know if I can hold all three of these up here. Let's see. No, I can't. Well, I have three of these sitting here on the table. So I have three of these. Oh, and here's the other one, which all had the same wax, the same fragrance, the same fragrance amount the same um, candle jar, and you are going to want to conduct, conduct a burn test. Now, let me tell you something. I know that these burn tests are going to use a lot of wax, especially if you do something of this size. It's going to use a lot of wax. It takes a lot of time. But once you get this down, once you make sure that your candles are proper, properly wicked, then you can just use that same wick and same wax and same fragrance for that particular candle every single time and move on to the next candle. So I say this to say that if you are getting a new fragrance and let's say you conducted one test just to see if there was some type of hot glue, because sometimes I won't invest in this much candle wax and a candle until I do have a clue that it is at least going to have a decent hot throw because if you just test it into a regular small jar and it doesn't have much of a hot throw, then I'm certainly not going to test it in my three wick candles. Okay, so I'm going to pop this down on the screen and I'm going to show you what the results of these particular candle jars were. So in this particular test, I tested, let me put them in order. I did a CD6, which for about a year, this is actually the wick that I was using for my three wick candles. And then I went up to, well, not up to, I won't say that. I changed the wick because here's the thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's the thing. The CD6 wicks were actually working, not necessarily on that first burn test, but as the candle burned down and it got a little hotter um, in the candle, it did start taking the melt pool down the side of the jar the way that you hope that it is going to. But the CD series, their wick are, they curve, they, they, um, they're like self wicking. And, you know, sometimes like they're up against the glass and sometimes they're leaning away, like from this part here, it, it leaned away from the side of the jar. So it didn't like make a nice even um, melt pool. So the CD in wick series are known to burn at only maybe, I think about a 30% angle. So there's less angle in that wick and they're more likely to look a little more, um, what I want to say, aesthetically pleasing to see a straighter wick. And then maybe you won't get more burn to one side, you know, versus less burn to the other side. So, and I want to also remind you of this. Every wick series is not the same. So a CD6 wick is not going to be the same size wick as a CDN6. So if you're mixing it up in different, um, you know, trying various wicks, um, just know that that number is not going to be the same number for those particular wicks. So once again, you want to go back to Candle Science and you want to put in um, your diameter and you want to put in your wax type. And then maybe if they don't suggest a wick that you were considering using, then maybe it's time to hit Google or even YouTube search and say like, what is the best, um, 
wicks for this type of wax or do LX series wicks work in this type of wax. So start Googling and you'll start getting some ideas and you may be able to really find out why that they're not because some wicks are specifically um, made for paraffin wax. Some wicks do much, much better in soy wax. So you really have to find, you can't just go out here and just randomly buy a different, a lot of different wicks because they are not designed always to work in the particular wax that you may be working with. So, so let's get back to what I was saying. <laughs> okay, so this is a CD6. And the reason why I wanted to test this against these two is because I was considering switching to CDN wicks. And then I went to a CDN7, which now CDN, these are CDs, these are CDNs, the ones that will have less of a, a curvature in them. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see like where, well, I don't know. Let's see, because I've snipped these off a bit. So I don't know, this is the CDN wick here. So I don't know how much of that you can see. Okay, so then I went and I didn't know if CDN7 was still going to perform as well or better than CD6. So I went ahead and created a candle with a CDN number eight. So I'm gonna let you take a look and see down below how these candles are burning. And then I'm gonna tell you which one I chose. So when you are conducting your burn test for your candles to choose the right wick size, you want to conduct at least four to five tests because your customer is going to want to see this candle perform and perform well all the way down. And then the other aspect of that is you may get a wick that doesn't perform well or doesn't seem to perform well on that very first burn test. But as you keep burning it down the side of the candle, it's like, well, wow. it's like, it is working. It is okay. So I think in essence of that, you should think the smaller the wick size that does what it is supposed to do is probably the better choice because one, that candle probably is going to last longer. Number two, it's probably going to have a better hot throw because it's a smaller wick. As long as you're getting that melt pool by that second and third burn, I would say that's a pretty good result for that burn test. So you want to, let's just say this, there is no perfect candle. So if you are striving for perfection, you got to rethink this. So you are going to do these burn tests and you are going to make the best possible choice as long as you have done the test correctly. You've got the same different variables going on in all three candles. You have done your four to five burn tests. And also when you do that four to five burn test in between the burns, you must allow that candle to cool for at least five hours. Then go back, trim your wicks down to a quarter of an inch. And also make sure before you even start this test, that you trim that candle down to one fourth of an inch before you light your candles. And then you do you, you burn according to the size of the diameter. If you have a four inch wide candle, you're going to allow this to burn at least th three and a half to four hours. And then you're gonna check and see if you have a full melt pool that is going, that it has melted uh, <laughs> to, the, to the sides of the candle jar. And if you don't, by the second or third burn test, I think that you can choose and say that that wick was too small and that is not a good option for that particular candle with that fragrance and that wax. Okay, so I haven't burned these all the way down. And that's a lot of things like a lot of people just, a lot of people say, well, why did you like fill up this whole jar? Because when you're doing the burn test for the wicks, you must burn it down. But I stopped here because I had already done this test on another one, but I had to create these for the sake of this video. Um, but if you are testing for hot throw, it is not necessary. Just hot throw. You've already chosen your wick and now you're testing. Or you could have done a pre-test for hot throw in a smaller jar or a small tin. And you could be doing another test after this if you chose your wick. Depending on 
and what order you went with things. Me personally, I need to know that that fragrance oil, especially working with a soy blended um, wax, that that fragrance oil is going to have a average or better hot throw to it. Because if not, then that saves me from wasting candles and doing conducting all these different burn tests. So let's see, I'm gonna go back and check to my notes. Okay, so some of the characteristics that you wanna watch for is you want that flame when you once you've lit the candles you want that flame to have minimal flicker i mean it may flicker a little bit and then kind of be steady and then maybe flicker a little bit more and then be steady it could be steady throughout um, but if it's wildly flickering and it never gets steady then i would say that that wick size is too large for that particular candle the other thing that you want to make sure is that you don't see like you know a lot of black smoke or the soot that comes from burning candles like sometimes when i just burn a candle i'll see a little bit and then for the remainder of the burn i don't see any so don't if you see it don't be alarmed but if you're seeing it consistently then yeah that wick size is too large for that particular candle also, another thing that you want to look for is when you are burning your candle, you do not want to have more than, well, I'm just going to say more than a half inch of melt pool. So that would, I, I hope you can see the rim of this. So this is about a half inch that it burned across there. And so that was a pretty good melt pool. Actually, this CDN7 compared to my CD6 did very well and this is also the second burn but as you can see there's still some wax around here and so me you know i had to go for it i wanted a nice clean melt all the way down i wanted that candle to look really great so i bumped it up to the cd cdn8 and indeed it was a much cleaner burn that went down the side of the candle jar okay so which ones did i decide to go with drum roll please blah, 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 blah. I decided that I'm no longer going to use the CD6 for my three wick candles. That I am definitely going to choose between CD7 and CD8 and that is going to depend on the fragrance oil. So I am every new fragrance that I choose to create a three wick candle for, I'm going to start with the CD7, CDN7. And then if that does not burn adequate adequate adequately there we go <laughs> for my burn test then i will bump it up to a cd and eight so that is the result of that burn test and remember every time you change the variable it may be another choice so but did the cd six work um yeah if probably if i burn this down again it's going to give me that nice even melt pool so there may be some fragrances that i may have to go back down to this um cd number six and i say that because someone i think it was just last week they sent me a message and they i had told them what candle science recommended and they said oh you don't think that will burn too hot and sure enough i was trying to um, I was testing a new candle fragrance and I used that same size wick in that jar that I told her, which it, which it was the CD, um, 14. And that 
candle burned out of control, but I almost forgot. So if you're watching this, I hope that you remember who you are and remember that you asked that question. It was because that was a different fragrance oil, which once again, I should remind everyone, please, every new fragrance oil that you are going to try, if it's the same jar, the same wax, but a different fragrance oil, it may not burn the same. It may require a different wick. So you have to test every single candle that you create for every single fragrance. Don't forget that. Very important. And also, don't forget that this is a journey. Stop worrying so much about perfection. Just get it to the point where that candle is going to be safe because you are selling these. You do not want people to have fires in their homes unless it's in their fireplace and then intend it to be a fire. <laughs> so just get a good burning candle and then, you know, get it on the line and you can always retest later. You can come back and revisit this. Once again, there is no perfect candle. So, and, it, and it's not, I mean, you, you cannot predict this because just like you get one batch of wax that you ordered from a company and the next time you notice they have different batch numbers that may change the variable. So always, whenever you create a batch of candles, just as I do, always burn one of those candles and I burn it all the way just to make sure, Hey, are we still on point? And because you got to think this is a live flame and it can be hazardous to your house. <laughs> well, it can cause a fire. Um, so just be careful and don't lean on perfection because in my opinion, there is no perfect candle. There are good candles and there are great candles. I do not believe that there are any perfect candles, but we will still try strive to get there. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my notes and make sure I did not leave anything out. Okay, so let's talk about mushrooming. If you see, like for instance, this is not a really good example because I didn't have any candles that mushroomed, but this one down here at the bottom, a little bit kind of will show you what mushrooming is. It's kind of like where the end of the wick frays out and kind of looks like it's forming a mushroom. That means that that wick is probably too large for that candle and it's burning too hot. Now, also, I want to throw this in there. Once again, leaning towards the no candle is perfect. Sometimes after I've wicked my candles and I've trimmed them down to the fourth of an inch and I go to light them, as soon as the fire touches them, the, the um, material just kind of frays apart. So it happened immediately. So be careful that you know what is exactly too much mushrooming. So it's, if it's like ballooned up and really blowed up, that's probably too much. But if it has slightly mushroom, that's just part of the process and can be normal. And that can still mean that you still have a good candle. So just, you know, monitor that and make, just make sure it's not like overboard with that. Uh, let's see. Also remember that to get the proper melt pool, however, whatever the diameter is on that candle, if it's three inches, expect it to take about three hours to reach a proper melt pool. If at that point in time, it doesn't look like it's gonna reach a melt pool, or maybe it's very, very close, then wait till it cools for five hours and then have another burn test with that same candle and see how that jar, that candle jar looks for the second burn test and then do it again. And if at some point, cause I have had candles, let me see if there's one of these. Okay, so this is it. This is, I double wick this with a CD6. And in the beginning, it did not look good at all. But as you can see, as it burned on down on the candle, I hope you can see in there, um, it gave me a nice even melt pool. So the CD6 wicks did work for this, even though in the beginning it did not look, it, it left um, wax on the sides of the jar. And But as I continued to burn down, it did eventually give me a nice even melt pool. So keep that into consideration. So. So if you see that that melt pool is very close to the edge or even one side has touched the edge and the other side hasn't quite made it, give it the second burn test and then observe it again and then give it a third burn test and just keep observing because at the end of the day, if it, it starts getting down towards the middle where it will get warmer as that um, the wick flame is lower inside of the candle 
and you may actually end up with a really good candle. Okay, so to wrap things up, you are going to get the diameter of your candle jar. You're going to go to Candle Science. You're going to put in their um, candle wick guide. You're going to go down, you're going to choose your wax, and you're going to choose your diameter. Just remember if it's at the larger end of that spectrum, for instance, if it says, oh, between 2.74 and 2.94, and your candle's like very close to that um, 9.4, then you might want to consider, this is me personally saying this, going ahead and going up to the next one. You can take what they suggested if you like and then also choose the one right next up and also choose the next one. So that would be your preference in your candle test. And from there, you're going to make sure all your variables are the same, the same wax, the same fragrance oil, the same fragrance amount. Oh, and if you, oh, oh I really almost forgot this. If you've added color or not. If you added color to that candle, it must be the same color and the same amount of color that you added. I forgot to put that in there and also the same size container. So good thing I did repeat that. And your melt pool should be no greater than a half inch and ideally about a quarter inch. So somewhere in between a quarter inch and a half inch. Flame should not be flickering out of control and should not be really burning high. You should not see a lot of soot, a little bit, Okay, you can live with that. But if it's constantly throwing a black soot and that little black smoke, no, you don't want that. That's not going to be a safe candle. And mushrooming to a minimal, to have a little bit of mushroom is actually I, what I consider to be normal. And also, always remember, the wrong wick can reduce your hot throw. So you want to make sure that you do this. This is probably the most important step of creating your candle is getting the wick right. So if you have more questions, if you seem like you're stuck, uh, put comments down below and I will certainly get back to you. I'm usually pretty quick about that. And if there's something that I left out, I may come back and put another video up at a later date. Okay, that's it. That, that wraps it up. So Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of my new subscribers. Um, thank you for all of your comments, your encouragement. I hope I've answered your questions properly. And I think that's it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.